I noticed. That, I don't know if you if you saw it, but uh, there was two speeches, one by the Queen Elizabeth and another one by the Pope. And third one. Oh, three speeches. Third one was by Snowden. Uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Christmas. They're all Christmas uh, under the cover of Christmas. Yeah. And making speeches. But this this speech that the Pope made is uh, I guess it's traditional. It's called something like Urbi. Oh, Etty, uh, Irby, something. Well, it was his his first attempt at making a Christmas Day speech, and uh, the Queen was making, I think, her 61st speech because she remarked upon her coronation 60 years before. Yeah. And I thought, because since you've been around longer, you probably would understand what she meant by that journey of uh, the Commonwealth Games. I know they have it in, in Canada and all the other. Well, I didn't listen to her speech all the way through, so I don't know what you're referring to. Oh, well. I always uh, kind of try to uh, leave when she begins by saying, my husband and I <laughs> to have this opportunity to speak with you today. <laughs> I say, okay, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, um, and the Pope, well, he's Argentinian, and, uh, Usually they always say a few words in French and English, but I didn't hang around to listen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All it is is a cover-up for what they're really doing. They are all the disciples of the Essenes. The ones who wrote those 66 five, uh, books? Yeah, well, apparently the word Ebunite uh, is also the Essenes by another name. Oh. So they, uh, they are the equivalent of Jesuits back in those days. And that's it's interesting that they have the ESS, which is feminine, at the front. NES, which would be son, the male, is female. Male, female. That's the... Uh what it's showing in that word, like a change from male to female, or... Yeah, it's the movement of the male into the female. Fatter. Fatter. Yeah. Hmm. Well, so since uh, we live here in the real promised land, uh, we uh, turn our sights towards our prime minister, and I noticed when he was standing up giving a talk just before Christmas, he looks pregnant. <laughs> what? He looks like he's reversed the process and and is carrying a baby. He's got a, a belly that appears to be totally round like a ball as if he was pregnant. <laughs> and of course his name is Step Hen. So in other words, he's a layer of eggs like a stepmother. So 
it may be something to that because um, the first one when they announced to the world they used um, what was the name the singer's daughter Cher her she was supposedly the first man to give birth to a child because she had yeah. a sex change and so you think uh, Stephan could actually really be a female but. Nathan well, they're like talking ab uh, about him behind his back uh, that he may resign shortly. And uh, his response to um, a journalist who asked him directly he's, it was, uh, I don't understand why people are talking about that. It seems so surreal. That certainly was not a uh, a negative response or a positive response. He was like taking some kind of esoteric middle place. Now, of course, if he's pregnant, um, it would be a reason for him to resign because he wouldn't be able to get up early in the morning <laughs> without having pickles and ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so maybe he's going to fool everybody and and say that he gave birth to the Antichrist or something. Uh. He belongs to some uh, religious sect, uh, which is. Uh, from out in, in Alberta. I don't know exactly what it is, but it uh, seems to be um, uh, very specialized group of people um, that include a number of uh, superintendents from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Of course, R-C-M-P, P-M, if you read it from the other side, remote controlled. So they control the prime minister by remote means. And that's probably that religious sect that he belongs to. What, like, what, um, what do you see that's religious about the sect? In the, like, what well, it, they say that it's linked to Christianity. However, um, it's not a mainstream uh, link, and it's linked to Christianity. Basically, means scapegoat. Because that's basically the definition of Christianity is one person who takes blame for everybody else. And this prime minister is one who never takes blame for, him, for anything he does. Won't even answer the questions directly when he's asked. So maybe it's in reverse mirror imagery because yeah. you really like to do that. Maybe the people are when you look them. at him, he doesn't look real. He looks more like a a plastic zombie. The only time he looks happy is when he's attending a hockey game. <laughs> Probably getting his instructions from the code. Uh, yeah. That would be his remote control. Mm. Mm. So who who's the new uh um what do they call him? Security minister or the, the minister for public safety. That's what it is. Is a rookie. 
Oh, let's see. Oh. Meaning he's new or a rookie of... I guess well, he's a, he's a young member of parliament, which is about the opposite of what it was when he replaced Vic Taves. Vic Taves is an older guy um, and uh, had been uh, Minister of Justice, I think, in Manitoba. Uh, has been in politics most of his life. Was a, a genetically engineered product from uh, Paraguay, um, South America, put together by the genetic team of Dr. Mengele, pretending to be a Mennonite, Manitoba. It seems that the Mennonite uh, and the Amish have a deal now where they they work together. Anything the Mennonite is not supposed to do, or, or the Amish is not supposed to do, the Mennonite do for them. They call the group Still Waters. In other words, the uh, water from the loo at the Sioux hasn't yet begun. Beside the still waters is what they call the Canadian group, but the American one is called still waters. I think the, uh, the guy that replaced Vic was uh, Stephen, but not in the step hen mode, more in the Eve mode. S-E-V-E-N, Blaney. Blaney. I think that's his name. Speaking of uh, South America, I think somebody posted something from, I don't know, some media circuit, um, alternative media, and they mentioned that uh, the president of uh, the country, uh, Uruguay, they say that this guy is the world's poorest president and he donates 90% of his salary to charity. When I heard that, all I could think of was none. Because mm -hmm. that's who he's giving all his money to. It's interesting. Well, of course, he's nuns are the richest uh, faction of any group that controls ecclesiastic Freemasonry. Mm. They are the biggest in, in the funding of Wall Street, and as well, they have more information in archives than uh, Harvard or Yale put together, more than... Uh, Bell Canada or uh, U.S. versions of a broken up Bell company who themselves at Bell probably have much more data on individuals than does uh, the National Security Agency or uh, the Canadian version CSC. You know, when I, I may not have all the, the facts yet, but when I look at things like, um, you know, when Nietzsche said, God is dead, I'm starting to think now he was speaking on behalf of the, the, the female side of ecclesiastic Freemasonry. Because a lot of what they, the symbolism I see, it seems to be them <laughs> saying that we're in control now and we have the ones running things. That's what it seems like a lot of it. Well, the, the women were supposed to have completed their task uh, as number nine, feminine nine. Uh, once Pluto was dismissed as uh, a 
ninth planet. So that means that at least in their opinion, uh, women have replaced women at least in a position of uh, power. They are now number six, which is the other side of equilibrium. So the number six means now that number seven being the altar leaves only one number above the altar, and that's number eight the figure for men. Uh, that basically relates to the period of time from uh, 1000 BC to um, our time, which is basically a um, change from moving away from the original hermaphrodite, going backwards in time under the concept they call rego, go again, born again, to return woman to the position of hermaphrodite as opposed to genderite. Genderite. I never heard that term. Well, I just invented it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I think you'll understand what that would mean. Yeah. The, the men are about to disappear from independent roles and instead emerge back inside women, giving what used to be the woman that was at one time in the past uh, a women, clan mother, who could clone herself, now is, is about to return to that mode of transportation, male, female. Now, this man going back, and is it crawling back or is it jumping back in quickly? Well, it all depends on whether you call 50 years fast. That's about what we have left now, 49 years, moving towards 48 at the end of next week, um, left to go to 2062. Oh. So from now, from this point to 2062, is a 49-year period? Yeah, four, 49 going on 48. depends at what time of the year the actual events occur. Seems like uh, the symbolic version comes with the March of the Penguin. So probably begins in March. I don't know if you've seen that movie by Disney. But it basically describes uh, male and female coming out of the water at the South Pole in Antarctica. Moving inland, they have to go about 60 miles, 65 miles inland before they are securely uh, over land rather than just over uh, ice on water. Uh, then they 
copulate and the babies are are born on land 60 some miles from the ocean but at that point they turn the babies over to the man mine and then they go on a search for food that requires them to get back to the ocean 60 65 miles away uh, and do their fishing and then walk back uh, the male has remained behind to babysit then they come and they feed uh, the male and uh, their babies oh um keeping that that behavior in mind where do you where can you overlay that and see like where the system copies that well it's all a genetic engineering thing that requires first of all you get rid of the old system mm. Noah's Ark it was about placing the genes of male and female animals on a boat, a raft, a craft, that would preserve the genetic material during the genocide they had planned for actual humans. And then they orchestrate by breaking a wall uh, a flood as they did uh, in uh, the Gulf the Arabian Gulf or they did uh, with the uh, Indian Ocean to create the Red Sea uh, and the water flows in and and kills the people uh, while they <coughs> remain safe in the craft loaded up with the, uh, the genetic material to kickstart a new group. We must destroy the old group first. Yeah. And the obvious destruction in this area, uh, North America, uh, would come at least in the east, if not all across Canada and the U.S., would come from destroying the northern peninsula of Michigan, which would allow the water to flow. And there's been activity... Now, because the weak place is at Sault Ste. Marie, um, any activity to destroy the Michigan Peninsula has to start at those locks. Sault Ste. Marie has three sets of locks, and the water flows down into Gore Bay from Lake Superior, and uh, from that place it would jump over into Georgian Bay, uh, which basically is further east, and from there, Lake Simcoe, and down the waterway that leads to Peterborough, uh, Ontario, and exits into Lake Ontario, probably at Trenton. Uh, recently, the Canadian military has performed uh, land exercise that uh, left Petawawa, which is about 75 miles north of Ottawa, and on roads sent many vehicles down to Trenton going right
right by our front door, by the way, uh, which is a mirror image of what they would have to do at that stage is uh, move from Trenton to Petawawa, especially their uh, F-16 Hornets, uh, who are there basically to be able to get to Ottawa, Montreal, or Toronto, they would have to have a, a new place because Trenton would probably be underwater. And they've been widening the road out in front of the farm here, uh, which uh, when they finished doing it the first time, uh, it looked different from all of the roads other than that one because the surface was more like an airport runway than a highway. It, you know, you have to have uh, a material as surface that, that assists the plane in, in uh, stopping when it comes down. So it can't be as, as smooth a finish as you would find on a highway. And that's basically what they did here. They seem to be preparing a secondary airport for those F-16s. Uh, they're not, you know, a body uh, as wide as uh, 747s or anything like that. They're they're more uh, an airplane for two. And they took down some uh, electrical wires that ran across section, straighter section of the highway, uh, and moved some telephone poles over to one side, uh, which to me suggests that they were building a runway using the side roads as parking areas. So they extended some of the, uh, the pavement into the corners of the side roads as if planes would then turn off and be parked over on the side. So I think there's there's prepar preparation underway for at least phase one of the Lou at the Sioux, which is water coming out of uh, Lake Superior in a controlled manner at, at the northern end so that the water flows mostly through Ontario and into Lake Ontario. Uh, as a first hint of things to come. On the other hand, uh, the majority of Lake Ontario, of uh, Lake Superior, remains behind the wall of uh, Northern Michigan, and in order to assist that. Uh, that fall of the wall, if you will, um, you could have a, um, a vertical earthquake, which kind of loosens up the rock uh, and prepares it for what is known as an inland tsunami. That would mean that at the Thunder Bay or western end of Lake Superior in Canada, you would have to have a collapse in the bay uh, that is there so that the water can fall into the hole, therefore bringing a lot of the surface water back away from the Lake Michigan or uh, uh, Michigan State Wall, northern 
peninsula there, bringing it back west down into the hole, and then uh, rebounding as a tsunami on the base of uh, that uh, uh, hole that's in the ground. Now, my information from Native people is that um, the center of that activity is on an island uh, managed by the French in, in the time when Canada was dominated by French explorers called Ile Royale. And under that island, which is at the west end of uh, Lake Superior on the Canadian side, uh, an isle, that island, Ile Royale, was placed into uh, American ownership, even though it's on the Canadian side. And uh, much like uh, uh, a gore of land um, on Lake of the Woods, which is on the Canadian side, but owned by the U.S. with no means of reaching it without uh, boats. There's no land connection to the U.S. So they've... They basically have designed um, American responsibility into an activity that must occur in Canada by trade-off of different parts of land, such as the southern end of Victoria Island in B.C., uh, even though it's lower than the 49th parallel, uh, like southern Ontario, uh, it, it should have been U.S. property at the 49th parallel, but is Canadian property. So there's been an exchange of land to place blame on uh, different uh, countries than geography would suggest. And uh, under the island, uh, they've been digging, according to the natives, for copper for at least 10,000 years. And Thunder Bay suggests an explosion at Under Bay, located in, in Thunder Bay with no seeming purpose is one of the major um, gangs of the mafia along with superior propane which suggests to me that if they needed an explosion in that area um that would cause the bay to collapse and water to fall in it, they have the means and the people to do it with considering uh, the explosive power of propane in a confined area when lit by, uh, when ignited by, by some kind of remote control device. On the other hand, the other place at Lake of the Woods uh, is called the Northwest Angle. And Northwest Angle prevents water flow from Western Canada to Eastern Canada by sending the water down because of the height difference into the Mississippi River Delta, and should there be an explosion, uh, nuclear or by some kind of 
uh, asteroid falling from the sky onto that area, which would flatten it out, that would change the direction of the flow of water. Instead of going south in the Mississippi, it would go straight through into Lake Superior. All of those are hints of what the Vikings were sent to explore in about the year 1000 when they spent 100 years uh, in this area of North America identifying all of uh, that uh, possibility. Under Leif Erikson and um, other family members, male and female, uh, they, they in fact set up what is being represented on the Canadian flag as the maple leaf. Their uh, uh, hockey team in Toronto is called the Toronto Maple Leafs, but it is misspelled because leaf in the plural sense becomes leaves, L-E-A-V-E. S as in uh, A uh, E A V A V E sorry Ave Virgin Birth mm -hmm. uh, in the middle of the word, but they write it as Leaf L E A F and add an S on the end, which is a non-existent situation unless you consider that what they're referring to is Leif Erikson, which is L-E-I-F, Erikson, the son of Eric the Red. Now, it's my opinion that when the word comes, they have already in place uh, the means by which to kill. Um, and in their language, they don't call us people. Uh, they call it genocide, which is basically the destruction of a task-oriented gene pool when its shelf life has expired in the same way as Noah got rid of the gene pool of uh, Mesopotamia so that it could be replaced with a gene pool uh, they had uh, in storage, symbolized metaphorically by the ark uh, coming, of course, as a precedent to the Ark of the Covenant, which basically means something planned and important in storage for use at a later date. Of course, the Ark of the Covenant is missing as part of the uh, treasure of the temple at Jerusalem, who, depending on who you believe, uh, uh, is being renovated today, if not rebuilt, um, for a third or fourth attempt. I suggest it's a fourth attempt at rebuilding. But we know that in the code, that would mean it's not the final resting place of the temple. Final resting place uh, depends upon a uh, laboratory preparing the final gene pool, uh, which when children are produced, they are known uh, as foundlings, usually um, presented to the world in a monastery 
because they are, in fact, the children of the nuns rather than than, uh, uh, babies being left on their doorstep. They are products of the, uh, the monastery itself. And in order to do that, tracking to find out where that might be, you have to consider that Israeli priesthoods were taken away to Mesopotamia in 586 B.C. and returned by Persians in uh, 537, leaving in between a period of 49 years where they had been in Babylon and were released by the Persians when they overran Babylon arriving back and beginning the construction at that time of the second temple. 49 is is a key number represented in our world usually by the number 13 and in Asia by the number 4, uh, which basically means bad luck. And you've got to get away from the number four, so they always talk about uh, the safe place is number four plus one. They do it in in different contracts when they say uh, a year plus a day. For example, if like Jennifer, you get locked out of Canada by an exclusion order. Uh, for a year and you show up at the border they'll tell you no you can't come in because it has to be a year plus a day and that's always to get away from the the number four that they are trying to disguise the bad luck type of thing they're okay. trying to disguise so number four would be uh, changed to number five because we live in a four-dimensional universe at this time, and they've screwed it up beyond repair. So the answer has to be a fifth universe in a fifth-dimensional environment as opposed to a four-dimensional environment. And that's what we at the farm are here for, is to prepare for that move. That, in fact, probably was visited by the Erickson family and chosen as a safety deposit box of the things they wanted uh, kept in the long run. It may have made a stop in New York, uh, that treasure on its way here, but it certainly is representative of um, the possibility, as had occurred in the past, that the treasure of Jerusalem is an omen of things to come. And it was, in fact, in Jerusalem when it was destroyed. It was taken to Rome when it was destroyed. It was taken to Carthage when it was destroyed. It was then taken to Turkey. Um, And they said, no, 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 get rid of it send it back to Israel where it was destroyed again. Uh, So my expectation is that they brought it probably to a location in um, southwest 
New York State and have moved it since, probably in the 1700s, to Canada, and we're going to see the destruction of the United States. If if it's not here and it's still in New York State, that would fit the formula of destruction. Uh, of course, there is also the hints given by the fact that Michigan's southern peninsula is shaped like a mitt, and uh, the rest of New York going east has what is called a finger lake, which suggests a glove rather than a mitt. And that would be another hint to say that uh, finger lakes in New York are going to be hit by, by a flood as opposed to the, uh, the mitt, which will kill many people in Minnesota, the people of uh, the Finger Lakes area will be uh, one per capsule as opposed to a bunch in a capsule. Uh, you can follow all of that. You can try to imagine Asia as a cob of corn where all the kernels are the same and they come in very large numbers. But Europe is like a pea pod where um, the number of people, um, the number of peas in the pod, if you will, are limited to about a dozen or less. But the future calls for an iPod, a pod for one. Therefore, that pod would more likely be started uh, by a process which involves the oak tree, which produces a pod that allows for only one within. In order to produce that one, they need a special amniotic fluid, which is sweeter than the amniotic fluid that we have normally been used to since Jerusalem created the uh, uh, Homo sapien sapien. Before Jerusalem was the Homo sapien, both words referring to sap of a tree. And before that, it was simply uh, Homo human. So there have been three modifications in the amniotic fluid and uh, added to the original, which probably uh, was linked to the pine tree, since we have a spine as the beginning part of creating human beings, the pine tree would suggest that it provided the sap for the original. So now is the time for the fifth version, and that is the maple tree. The maple basically shows three main peaks and two smaller ones at the bottom, each one of the main ones having sections of their own, so groups and factions are the process uh, by which one, um, using that as a metaphor, suggests 
the change that is about to happen. The fact that Christians use what appears to be a fish is uh, is also important because, in fact, it's it's a portion of uh, DNA. If if you are to take DNA, which links sections one to the other by crossover, and you break one of those, it would make it look like the tail attached to a fish, but it's in fact the sign for genetic engineering a gene pool, which will replace the gene pool after the calamity. And the calamity will come when the northern peninsula of Michigan collapses. Mich by the way, Lake Superior, which stands behind it, uh, is uh, in fact about 1,200 feet deep and 300 miles by 500 miles means one hell of a pile of water. And it will splash down on the mint, which is the southern peninsula, go around it through Lake St. Clair, attempt to get by Detroit and Windsor, which is in an S-shaped river, finding it impossible with all of the trees and garbage floating around. It will go over land to reach Lake Erie, uh, which is the Bruce Peninsula in Canada, uh, southern Ontario, uh, matching up with the original flood that came from the locks going down to Trenton, should create, if anything is left, an island as southern Ontario uh, disappears in the shape that it now has. And then the water flowing over land begins a process of raising the Canadian shield, which, like a V-shape, arrives at Ogdensburg, uh, New York, and will cause the Canadian Shield to rise, therefore blocking out the possibility that water can flow into um, the St. Lawrence Seaway and instead uh, overwhelm the banks on the southern side of Lake Ontario especially at a place called Watertown near Syracuse, and then flow across the land in an attempt to get back to the St. Lawrence, flowing and flooding all of the land which uh, surrounds Ogdensburg until it arrives at Messina, the Messiah linked to Messina and ESS, which is normally used at the end of a word, uh, suggests that that Messiah at Messina has been caused by someone who uses the letters ESS differently than is used in normal English, such as in the word princess, duchess, and so on, where they're at the end of the word. This moves it to the front, and the only candidates for doing that are the Essenes. Essenes are the original word that describes a group of people that currently reside 
in Spain, Portugal, Wales, and uh, the Middle East, mostly in the area of Syria, Lebanon, called the Ebunites. The Ebunites suggests one, B, R. UN one is behind the uh, the whole plot, if you will, and that word un, which is French for one, UN suggests that it is getting assistance from Lehman genetically engineered women who live in a convent and are called nun. N-U-N means it's one whether you read it from right to left or left to right. Starting with the second letter, of course, because number two is in fact number one in the code. So you'll find Ebunites in Mallorca, you'll find them in Santiago de Compostela, you'll find them in Wales, in England, and they use the name basically to hide the fact that they are the same people as the Essenes. Now, if you go to Christianity, uh, because Essenes changed their religion on demand when it's politically expedient to do so, I would suggest that their version of an Essene in Christianity would be one, the Franciscans, two, the Jesuits. Jesuits is je suis, which means in English, I am. They are the teachers, they are the philosophers, while the Franciscans are out in front doing the work. The Jesuits are, in fact, doing the thinking. Of course, Mallorca supplied uh, a priest for California known as Father Sera. Sera in French means will be. He's as the guy that had the vineyard, said, right? Que sera, sera, what will be will be. Mm. He's the guy that that had the vineyard. And, uh... Well, he is described as a founder of uh, California. Hmm. So you can expect some activity in that area as well before too long. More than likely a vertical earthquake Los Angeles a blind thrust eh? a blind thrust blind thrust yes well, they much have more destructive than a horizontal volcano um, but much more practical to anyone who can enter from below because it creates a hill as um, does a volcano. It creates a hill on the surface and that provides a marker on the surface uh, which they can then relate to a position underground. And 
that's why Capitol Hill, Parliament Hill, and the Seven Hills of Rome and so on are all located at the top of a hill. The place that I was born is called Sandy Hill, which has DNA in there, and sand being the original material used for computer processing. So whether anyone believes it or not is irrelevant to our task. We are not here to save the masses. The masses are genetically engineered not to believe. Only two groups that know. One is the group that wants to create the problem who work under the name God. And the other one is the group that wants to save a limited number of persons with functioning brains who can be moved to a um, place other than this universe so that they can kickstart that fifth universe in a fifth dimension as opposed to a fourth universe in a four-dimensional environment being left behind. And that process of bringing creator and creation together for one last time must occur on the farm that I am located in and that the royal families are doing everything in their, can, uh, in their um, uh, under their capabilities at this time to take control of for some time in the future. You can expect the help they are getting will come from banks and Company? cosmetically from the insurance industry and from ecclesiastic Freemasonry. They are waiting for 2014 now having failed in their attempt in 2011, 2012, 2013 they are hoping that they can do it, uh, take control of the property in 2014. But creation has a view that says after the four will come the important one, the move by creation to retake control of what it had created as a fourth universe and move the people who did not cause the problem in the fourth to a fifth universe where it will be kick-started at the level at which the fourth has uh, arrived technologically speaking, and move on from there, leaving behind the um, uh, fourth universe whose shelf life has expired since 2008 and uh, will eventually, whether it takes short time or a long time eventually 
destroy itself through expansion, if not collapsing by one galaxy running into the other and being absorbed into black holes and that kind of stuff. In any event, the group that moves out of here uh, must be chosen uh, in the next short while. The process of identifying those people who should be put on trial to choose whether uh, they move forward to the waiting line to move out or are, as suggested by um, uh, the use of the term uh, they fall under, uh, take one step back, repair some of the problems they've created, and then join the group. Uh, what's the name of that, Jerk? Karma type cleansing? I beg your pardon? You said karma type cleansing, that work that they do? Yeah, well, it's a group? cleansing that they do, but they come from a place called purgatory. Yeah, they purge the Tory. They purge the Troy, they purge the Royal, they purge everything that created the problem from themselves while at the other end religion and the Tories working together uh, basically cleanse you of your sensitivity and your ability to think about more than yourself while they, they put you back in circulation through genetic engineering uh, suggested by the Hindus and the Buddhists who prepared this project uh, after the Ice Age. And they infect, uh, so it was interesting how you described it, they infect with like gene pools? Yeah, infect, they have infect. they've infected and infested the gene pool that has existed since the Ice Age uh, with uh, the story of Adam and Eve. The Roma, who were uh, the Aborigines and became, in fact, the gypsies of the world, whether they are described as uh, uh, Berbers, or uh, people of the kind, who basically move their gene pool to different places around the world as aboriginals, meaning out of the original, therefore not themselves original, but out of the original. That's the change described by the Australian version, which is Aborigine, to the Roma, who centered in Rome, who are Aboriginals. But in fact, all of them were genetically engineered and given information by creation at a time back in time before the Ice Age that transfer of information was done in a manner where creation provided 19 rules and regulations to running a universe out of the 20 it possessed, leaving the 20th to the current 
population to figure out. And if they did it right and followed the lead of creation, which was evolution, they would have achieved their intended consequences. But because they chose to short-circuit it by genetic engineering and the use of magnetic force against gravity, they, in fact, made the wrong decision at the beginning. And every day that went by, that one twentieth or five percent rule expands in its angle or angel stretching out. So instead of having angels that were there at the beginning, they have arc angels starting with Noah's story of the flood which is like Adam and Eve like Abraham and Sarai like Jesus and Mary all stories about genetic engineering the story of Jesus is of course the story of someone who accepts to take the blame for others and therefore is a scapegoat. The human beings of this planet are accepting to take blame and take ownership of the bad things they've been programmed to do rather than stopping in their tracks and saying, mass murderers who were nice guys yesterday and bad guys today when they went into a schoolroom and killed a bunch of kids um, are bad people. Rather than saying, what in hell was this person programmed with that causes them on demand to reverse their personality and go about and do bad things, totally out of character. Who programmed this person should be the question being asked. Rather than jumping to the conclusion that you're doing dealing with a bad person. And everybody in the history of the world since Adam and Eve have been told that they are bad people and that they have to be treated as bad people. And what's, you know, the Scottish music bagpipes that they play uh, at funerals, reminding them of what they used to be and what they are, unless they accept the fact that they are bad people in need of cleansing. I read a story once. The story dealt with an intelligent house, all technology controlled remotely. And the guy comes home, and he lives alone, and the house reacts in turning on the mood music. It reacts by turning on lights as he enters different rooms. It reacts by uh, putting on uh, a show on, on television. The meal begins to be prepared by robotic activity and everything. And the man sits on 
the couch and feels almost like he's in heaven. It's, he's got all these technology servants working on his behalf. However, he, unknown to the house, has fallen in love or something uh, and, and needs for either personal reasons or business reasons, needs to move to a different place. And he ends up speaking softly on the telephone to the people he is going to be moving with. And the telephone, of course, being run by Ma Bell, overhears this and tells the house. And the house is distraught that their master would consider leaving them for someone else, some other place, and is going to sell the house. And the house gets pissed off. And what it does is put on a movie. And that movie takes place in the Arctic. And to create the mood for the Arctic, it starts to lower the temperature in the house. It serves the man alcoholic beverage and the man's watching this movie about some place in Yukon or uh, Alaska and feels the, the cold that, that uh, the people in the movie are feeling and uh, is drinking his drink, which inebriates him to the point where at one stage he falls asleep. And the house turns the temperature down by turning on the cooling system to a max. And the person freezes to death. Now the question becomes, who is to blame? Is it the man by moving out who is to blame? By suggesting to the control mechanisms all around him that he's caught on and there are better places to be in the future? Or is it the house that's to blame? Because it, in fact, following its program capabilities, did the actual murder. Or is it the person who wrote the software for the house to use, who is the actual murderer? Or is it the maintenance person who maintained that computer program who is to blame? And I leave it to you that the question is no different for every human on planet Earth today who has come in contact with Ma Bell. Ma Bell has all the data. Ma Bell uses Wall Street. Ma Bell uses the Internet and therefore controls the activity of the military, 
controls the activity of religion, controls the activity of everybody else around the world to one degree or another according to the instructions they put into the program of each individual. As gene pools, they do a specific task. They might be religious people. They might be military people. They might be corporate people. They have a specific task. But each one of them also has the ability to call up something outside their task on remote control instructions. What does the programming allow them to call up under those special occasions? Mass murder is one of them. Serial rape is another one. Abusers of all kinds that one can describe as being psychotic? Why is it that a guy called Russell Williams, who ran the military base at Trenton, Ontario, where the planes are located, one day was arrested and upon interrogation admitted to being a serial rapist and murderer. Why is it that in the Senate of Canada a number of people have been caught with their hands in the till? The majority of them had, in fact, been media prior to being appointed to the Senate. The people who claim to have a middle ground and and don't take sides have been shown in the Canadian Senate to be the worst thieves who have a sense of ownership of what really belongs to the masses of Canadians, they have viewed it as their own. Why? Why would their personality switch in a second from one to protecting the Canadian people while they are media and then as soon as they are appointed to the Senate they steal everything they can get their hands on and basically are told admit it and they keep repeating I only followed the rules the rules allowed me to steal Well, who's to blame? My suggestion is, until you go back to the beginning and see what has been done to gene pools around the world and how they were moved out of Egypt, who were studying mummies during the 18th dynasty, and moved down the line to uh, being a country uh, called Israel based upon the name of Abraham's wife who gave birth to a baby at the age of 90 while he was 100 years old and the story of genetic engineering has to be involved in that someplace until people begin to point the finger at the mathematicians that are engineers. They don't get the point, but they pay the price. Mm-hmm. 
the conductor on a train does not drive the train. He sells tickets. The whistle on a train makes noise. It does not drive the train. Only the engineer drives the train. That goes back to the the Rockefeller guy who they blame for crashing the train in the Bronx. So, uh, so was he really even in control when that happened? Who figured out that if you park a train loaded with oil seven kilometers away from Lac Megantic, and you did not put the brakes on, even though the train was stopped on a hill, and allowed that train to take off on its own and blow up as it entered the town of Lac Megantic. Who but a mathematician could do that? Who but an engineer can figure out that in order to create a flood that will take out a gene pool, you need to do some preparation work in advance? Who were the people building at the base of uh, the Niagara Falls on the American side, who said that for them to accomplish their task, they had to block off the water and work on the base. Who could do that in preparation for what is required when the water flows out of Lake Superior into Lake Ontario, having flooded everything in between and not being blocked to divert water away from their intended path. Who did that? Engineers. Who tell politicians what can and cannot be done. When you want to build a dam, when you want to build a pipeline, and and studies are presented to the government, but the effects this will have on the environment, they're engineers. Who controls the government of Canada in Vegreville, Alberta, a place nobody would even think to look, but the headquarters of the Corps of Engineers. Don't you remember, Jared, when you wanted to come to Canada, you had to get permission. And the letter came from Alberta. Mm-hmm. Every place I was asked to speak after laying charges against the Prime Minister during Brian Mulroney's time that his gang around him was no different than the mob an organized crime, and the judge agreed and sent them to trial until Bob Ray, the premier of Ontario at the time representing the Democratic Party, stopped the case from going ahead on behalf of the conservatives who had been charged. To 
is there anyone who still believes there's a difference between Democrats and Republicans? <laughs> or that they, in fact, work together on behalf of some unknown superior. When you want to find who's at the heart of things, you look for the most famous constructions by people who obviously were engineers. Petra, Jordan. The Taj Mahal in India. The Forum in Rome. The temple at Jerusalem. The Buddhist temples all over Southeast Asia. The protection from earthquakes installed in Japan. The space program the U.S. Everything is linked to mathematics and engineering. Royals may be cosmetic, such as the Snowden gang that is around here. But when you know that Snowden is a sector in Montreal among French Canadians, and that it's from that place that originated parcels sent to the conservative prime minister of Canada and to the leader of the Liberal Party of Canada that contained pieces of human body. When you understand that a Mr. Snowden, a photographer, married Princess Margaret and entered with his camera into the royal family of England, photographing internally every room, every spot, every place, so that they would know, in fact, how to... Um, enter without entering at some time in the future once he was divorced from Margaret. Who but a Mr. Snowden sat in front of a computer watching how the security establishment monitored the existence of people in the U.S. and how they should be shut down now that the information was gathered and in their possession, a certain Mr. Snowden did the job for them, but he's not all. He found refuge in Mr. Putin's house. Strange name, Putin. Sounds a lot like Quebec's favorite food. French fries covered in cheese and gravy. French fries covered in Swiss cheese, covered in Ave, Brave, genetic engineering. The 
avenue, the way, the way of Santiago de Compostela, compost heap, that begins its journey at the Louvre Museum in Paris. Paris, Pa, IRS. People who steal from citizens as they did from me, creating a false debt on their records about me owing them money that I do not owe, but then filing that information with the credit bureau so that at no time in the future could I send this message I'm sending out today to the world in general because I would be broke. Well, poor me. I may be broke, but I am not stupid. And if there are 13 people left in the world that could, in fact, form a board of directors for the people who are going to leave this universe, it's my job to find them. If I could find the person with the key to unlock the fifth dimension and allow us all to enter, it's my job to find them. And I did. And her name is Jennifer. And her name, when she was given that name as a child, was Nagel, Angel, with the letters mixed up. All the people that created the problem will, in fact, come across Jennifer before they enter the courtroom that will make the decision. Their creation will decide whether they should come with the group that leaves or not. And if they don't come, what will be their penalty? All of that will happen at the door of the court, the pineal court which will read people's pineal gland in the same way people read a black box after an a accident by a train or an airplane or a ship. And that black box does not lie. It will tell the court everything that person participates in participated in in order for creation to express the appropriate sentence. And it will clear those people who are not responsible. And it will clear by giving a second chance to those who showed that they deserve the mercy that they will be crying for. Seven billion people or so will move into the next dimension. But none of those people will have, in fact, cause the problem we are leaving behind. The engineers from Ontario Hydro and their slaves who call themselves management the engineers of Bell Canada 
and there are slaves who call themselves management. The engineers of waterworks who cause floods as well as make water a, an accessible product in all our houses will be discovered to be, in fact, setting up another mode of spying where water is the mode of transmission. The day is coming quickly because people need to be told as a mass so that no one is left in a position when we leave this universe of not knowing why it happened. The suggested date of that knowledge seems to me to be the year 2020, the year where the engineers called optometrists, in fact, tell you that you see clearly. If I'm correct, that means we now have six years to go before the masses are told. And it is an opportunity for people who are guilty of having lived out their programming, not guilty of what they did, guilty of living out their programming, and make amends for that. Have a chance to be brought along the next universe. The fifth parallel universe awaits our arrival. It is now time for me to go feed the animals their midday snack. And therefore, I have to leave you now. Okay. Bye for now.